Okay. And then, of course, we can also edit out anything that, like, okay. if some so, things like, you know, when you talk about top secret stuff. That right. you so then, if I do reveal top secret information. Yeah. That could be part of the ploy. That's what we could do. Like, totally. like don't worry. We'll just we'll edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't say anything. I listen to a lot of podcasts, and frequently there's like a thing where it's like, because I'll listen to like something with a TV writer, and they're like talking about some bad producer from mm -hmm. like before. Oh, and they'll be like, we'll edit that out later. Yeah, <laughs> and they don't. But like they have a reputation. Like I, I yeah. can't tell if it's one of those things where like after they finished recording, the guy said, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Only because the odds that, that they would like just fuck this guy. Say, oh, what's the swearing policy on this podcast? Oh, yeah, thumbs up. <laughs> fuck. <Pro> fuck. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> Should I do a quick yeah. intro? Should we yeah, get started? Yeah. All right. What's up? How's everybody doing? We're uh, here with another with another episode. I'd like to introduce Ariel Stevenson and Benji Kleinman, two of our special guests for today. Hello. Um, for our topic specifically of uh, you know fun things like infectious diseases, we're going to be talking to Ariel because she has some expertise in that area. <laughs> had a lot of infections, huh? <laughs> I actually have had a lot of infections. But that is maybe not why I have expertise in that area. <laughs> I was just kidding about that, yeah. <laughs> She's covered um, in bacteria. It's mostly fungal covered. infections. <laughs> it's not making it any better. <laughs> no, it's making it more think. true, though. <laughs> okay. I just, you know, just the summer, it gets really humid. It yeah. gets really hot. So we're going to edit this out, right? <laughs> yeah, it's totally. It's all, it's all going to be gone in editing. Can we talk about athlete's foot on this podcast? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Science I part. mean, it's like science. So it's like we want to keep, you right. know, we got to keep the vibe. Right. Athletes' um, is, the, uh, is the Ebola of America. Of yeah. Silver Lake, apparently. <laughs> is there? Is there? A, is there? A, I don't know. I have it. <laughs> Did you get it from somebody? Did you touch somebody it. else's bodily fluid? <laughs> Someone was bleeding out of their eyeballs, and I put my toes into, into that blood. <laughs> I can stop the infection. <laughs> Just well, why do you tell them face? about your treatment for it? For years, I had athletes' foot. Uh huh. Years. Seven years, maybe eight years. Okay. And my treatment was to wage a mental war on it with my mind. Whenever my feet would start itching, I would go like, "Be damned!" <laughs> and like focus really hard. And like a few. I like your I like your like concentrated scrunchy face. Yeah, I would. I would it's actually really be good. scrunching my face up in bed. Okay. So I would like try to like vanquish it, and it would work. It would go away for like months at a time. So I I would tell Ariel, I was like, "Look, I'm going to tell you, I have athlete's foot, but I can defeat it with my mind." <laughs> And Ariel, what would you think of his Jedi mind trick to get rid of his athlete's I foot? I finally convinced him to start using medicine. <laughs> yeah, when she, once Ariel got my athlete's foot. <laughs> I don't have athlete's See, foot. This is why I asked her on, because she's an expert. That's right, yeah. <laughs> get medicine. That's right. Step get medicine, yep. So I like been, that. I've been using the antifungal and practice. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of working. <laughs> uh, the good news is now nobody will want to use our shower. That's right. You're that's welcome. true, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Anybody listening to this podcast, if they come over, they're going to, like, be asking for, like, sandals. Yeah, and... when we offer guests to use our shower, as we always do, mm -hmm. we're going to wonder why so many people are declining. Or taking showers in their socks, maybe. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. Ariel's mom stays with us sometimes, so we'll see if she gets athletes, but that'll be the first test. <laughs> Don't tell her. <laughs> that seems like a bad idea. She's a doctor, though. She's probably used to having, like, to working with human guinea pigs. That's true. She probably, she probably already has athletes, but... Mm -hmm. um, so are we talking about Ebola? Well, I Ebola. want to talk about Ebola. We could talk about Ebola. I want to talk about, we could talk about both. I want to talk about Ebola because Ebola has reemerged in Africa. Right. And um, I saw, what was that movie with Dustin Hoffman? Outbreak. Outbreak. I saw when I was a kid and scared the shit out scared of me. Scared the shit out of me too. So this whole thing, is, I'm, yeah. I'm interested. There's more, I mean, there's more backstory than just that. Yes. But Outbreak that, plus Africa plus yeah. Ebola. Well, I will tell you, as mm -hmm. this is my only really area of expertise in this, that I just heard recently that when that outbreak happened, someone wrote a book about it. And the so, Hot Zone. The Hot Zone. Yeah, I read that too. It's yeah. really scary. Yeah. And the book was optioned to be made into a movie, but just the, the movie that Dustin Hoffman was in is not based on that book. They were trying to capitalize on it. Uh, but because it was okay. a true story, they just said based on the story, the story of, of the Hot Zone. Because that's really what it was called. That's why the book was called that. Mm -hmm. So they essentially capitalized on all this momentum in the book when some other movie company owned the title for the book. But they could still call it the... It'd be like... Oh, they just... So yeah. they, they had like bought the rights? Right. So you can make really. a movie called Titanic while the other Titanic's getting made. Because you're not... It's yeah. not about that movie. It's about Titanic. What and if I remember them, like, pretty well, like, the only connection is Africa, the disease. I mean, it's like... Yeah. 
any you would say any contagion movies as related as this, right. this was basically right. is I outbreak know. about Ebola? Yeah, I haven't seen. Um, I don't think they actually say the name of it, but it, it's like percent. a disease where people bleed yeah, it's, a lot. yeah, totally. It's in, it's in Africa and people bleeding out of their eyes and stuff. Yeah, I remember that really freaked me out. And then the they movie. bombed the, the yeah, tribe, and yeah. it was like it's fucked up. That's man. a terrible way to contain a disease. That doesn't make any yeah. sense. It didn't work. It did, yeah. Yes, <laughs> you'd be right. That's why, they, that's why they had to call Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Um, Break expert Dustin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so this was a Immun- documentary. Yep. Yes, about <laughs> immunologist. It was really it was a biography of, uh, <laughs> of Dustin immunolog- Hoffman. <laughs> yeah, it was top scientist and researcher Dustin Hoffman. Right. Who also coincidentally is an alien expert, as seen in the documentary Sphere. Yeah. Yep. yep. Although you know it's weird, Glenn Close's dad was actually one of the people very responsible for um, containing the first Ebola outbreak. Really? Yeah, he died a couple of years ago. And I remember like randomly reading about that. It was like Glenn Close's dad was like one of the dudes that like stole a plane in Africa to go like take care of like a certain thing, and like he was there at Ground Zero, and he was like super responsible for it. That's well, that, wild. That brings me to a question, which is just do we, I don't know how they contained the first one. Like, does anyone know? Is there, what? there haven't there been a bunch of Ebola outbreaks? Like, I yes, there have. Well, from what I was reading, like in that article today. There's just been a bunch in the last, like basically since it was discovered in the 70s. Every once in a while, it seems to pop up. Right. This is the worst, though. Yeah. Really? In terms of number of people have died. Which is like, like 400 that. or something? 400 to 600. Estimates vary. Or 600 people infected, at least. And it's got like a 90% kill yeah. rate. Well, Ariel, you, you've had some knowledge experience with public health and safety and... That's true. I worked Not in, necessarily Ebola, but... I worked in public health education. Okay. So, did you guys educate about African insane killer diseases? Well, we only did HIV, gotcha. which is... That's one. That, that mm-hmm. is one. Yeah. It does qualify. Um, but, but apparently that's relevant to Ebola because one of the biggest factors spreading it is the human burial uh, practices in Africa. Gotcha. So, I guess behavior is a really big issue there. For Ebola. Interesting, interesting. Wait, so that happens with AIDS too? No, no, just for Ebola. Oh. But just the behavior is a big part of containing both mm-hmm. outbreaks. Right, right. So squeaky, <laughs> tell us what you think. She's claiming your computer is her. Yeah, just to make sure she doesn't pause the podcast. What's up, squeaky? <laughs> We've got a cat. She also has experience with infectious diseases. That's true. When we got her, she actually looked like she had Ebola. <laughs> She was bald and covered in scabs. And we, oh, gotcha. Yeah, and Ariel nursed her back to hell. I gotcha. always say we, but I didn't do anything. <laughs> Maybe it's more just like light leprosy. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. something that's like that. Squeaky. Um, so do, what, are they, what, means, what are they doing to try to stop it in Africa? Well, it's like from everything I was looking at, me and Ariel were just talking about this. It looks like uh, because it's spread through bodily fluids. Right. Um, gross. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, like you were saying with the burial, it's not like, you know, it's not like coughing on somebody and like they get sick. It's like more close contact. I mean, sweat was one of them. Really? I think so, yeah. And things like that. But it's also um, like intimately, like even sweat, you can't just touch it. Yeah, and places that don't have plumbing and stuff like that, like that can be a huge factor because then it's like fluids and stuff like that are still just like around. Yeah, they're not getting taken care of. Right. So, um, apparently also a lot of people are, cause like the, the best way to contain it is to just isolate the person that has it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a bunch of people, because they don't want their family members to die isolated are like running away so that they can't be isolated. Yeah. Oh, so they're, they're saying like, they're basically, they're hiding the infection so right. that they, uh, they and, don't get quarantined. Yeah. And the that. families are hiding family members that have it because they don't want them taken away. Gotcha. That's, that's such a crazy philosophy, even though I understand because it's, tragic but it's like you gotta but think you gotta about like think about parts of west africa though where it's like yeah an authority figure is just a dude with a gun yeah you know what i mean yeah. like right and apparently yeah. they they say like they're coming for your family member it's just like no i think yeah, yeah i think well, we'll I, like, yeah, yeah. I, yeah these point. people aren't government agents like why would mm-hmm. they trust it's just like a clinic of strangers mm-hmm. and apparently doctors without borders has been targeted in the past by people in west africa for because they like claim that they brought ebola there so really, so like wow. already they just okay. have no reason to trust these doctors. Maybe it's a conspiracy. Whoa, this goes deep. Yeah. Wow, we need to do some serious research. What? How did it start? 
man fucking an ape. It's always what it is. <laughs> it's always what it comes down to, yeah. right? It's just a dude Some fucking a monkey. An ape. <laughs> Which we've probably been doing since the dawn time, really. If you can catch a monkey, mm-hmm. you're going to suck a monkey. Once you have it in your hands, what are you supposed to do with it? Fuck it. Eat it or fuck it. <laughs> and monkey meat's no good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Dave Chappelle did such a good bit about that. Oh yeah. About fucking a monkey. Huh, I'm gonna stay home with my monkey. <laughs> I'm gonna stay home with my monkey. <laughs> hey Dave, you wanna go to the club? Hmm. Nah. <laughs> That's great. This is a good um, crossover with Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Maybe we can ask them and see if they want to mutually advertise like our podcast <laughs> for their movie. What if... That's the twist at the end. Because everyone knew the twist at the end of the... Well, she hasn't seen the first new one, so I'll just... Whatever. There's a different twist at the end of the first uh, new one? No, But it's great. Well, the first new one, you mean from the old one? The, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, I know the old one. Yeah. But I don't know that... I haven't seen the first one of this series. But we have a gotcha. day to watch it. Gotcha. That's very romantic. <laughs> yeah. CGI monkey. It's got yeah. a pretty good CGI monkey. Yeah, it's a for pretty sure. solid CGI. It's CGI? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean... Yes. Mostly. Yes. One hundred. It's what's his name? Uh, Andy Circus, yeah. the dude with like the golem with the oh. ping pong balls. You know, he's famous. He's also going to yeah. be someone in the new Avengers movie. He's really blowing up Andy Circus. My whole life, I thought Andy Circus was spelled Circus, like like do 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 S E R K E S or something. Um, he kind of looks like the type of dude that would drive a clown car. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Does he have a face for CGI? No, he's surprisingly good looking. Like like he's on like the talk show circuit right now oh. because of this movie, and mm-hmm. he's like. You know, like, I would have thought he looked like Gollum, but he doesn't. It's like a little, I don't know if good looking is exactly No, yes, describe. right, but he's not, I had this, I knew this guy, I hope he doesn't see this, like, on my Facebook page or something uh-huh. and listen to this, but this, I won't say his name for that reason, but I went to high school with this guy who, I was like, he wanted to be in Cirque du Soleil and he was a fucking weirdo, and when I saw The Lord of the Rings, I was like, he looks like Gollum. <laughs> It's perfect. Yeah. I, like, I was watching Lord of the Rings and I was like, who does this Gollum guy remind me of? It turned out it was someone whose name I will not say. <laughs> um, That's a pretty good story for our podcast listeners. <laughs> <laughs> someone who you guys don't know looked like someone from a movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> End of story. Uh, I'm going to be the star of this thing. <laughs> this thing is going to take me places. Ariel, can I ask you a question? Sure. Again, tapping on your expertise... Which you keep like laughing about, so. Um, but compared to Benji and I, yeah, come on. That might be true. Yeah. No offense. Okay, so you have like something like swine flu, and then that hit, and it was like, oh my god, oh like SARS, and it's like the death rate was like one percent or two percent. Yeah. This the death rate's like ninety percent. Right. What is the difference? <laughs> Like, why is there a difference? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, I feel like SARS, it's like, okay, it's like babies and old people, more or less. You right. know what I mean? It's like, right. like the weaker, people rate, with the weaker immune systems or something like that, right? That death rate was terrifying, though, because mm-hmm. SARS could be, SARS was transmitted through respiratory contact. Oh, so that was the other side. It got larger number, like way larger numbers, but it yeah. was much less deadly. And, and right. once you have something that's transmitted that way, the second someone gets on an airplane, everybody on that airplane is at risk, Weird. which is not true of Ebola. Mm-hmm. And if that's like 300 people at the airplane, that's, right. yeah. you know. And all couple, over the world. And then at that point, you can't contain it anymore. Cause like, mm-hmm. I mean, you can, but it's just much harder. Ariel always has this fear of, will something like this come and spread? Like, she was very terrified of avian mm-hmm. yeah. flu. Um, and we were talking about how, right. So, like, swine flu was scary because of how well it could spread, not, mm-hmm. how, not what the death rate was. It was like the inverse of Ebola. Well, and you said avian flu was like that, too. Yeah. Yeah, totally. What would you say? Avian flu had a very high death rate. So, like, apparently, I learned this in a class I took at UCLA. Mm -hmm. Um, Plug, plug. (laughs) um, There's, like, an uh, inverse relationship between the the virulentness of a virus Mm -hmm. and how easy it is to spread. Is that right? So, like... Well, probably, like, if you're looking at the survival rate of a virus, like, what's its most efficient... Right, exactly. Between those two, then yeah. it's going to be high one, low the other. Right. Possibly, so, like, the most successful viruses like. are the ones that, like, hit that sweet spot. But if mm-hmm. they kill people too quickly, it's never going to be effective at spreading. Oh, how Because people can't move that fast to spread it. And, it. and so that's why HIV is so, like, why it affects so many people because you live for a really long time with it. It's mm-hmm. not actually that virulent. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is the other side where it's, like, super deadly, but it kind of, like, kills itself out. Like yeah, the odds exactly. really quickly. The odds yeah. of getting to America and like spreading are slim. Right. Yeah. 
very slim, specifically because you die so fast and like, and it's harder to spread. Mm -hmm. But Aaron made a great point, which is why I brought this up originally, which is if a prostitute got it. And she was working really, really like well. long, yeah. like a double like, shift that yeah. night. Yeah. I would like to amend yeah. my comment to a sex worker if a sex worker got it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ariel, what she's, I'm misquoting her, she's had a hoe. If a hoe got it. <laughs> if a street hoe got it. Ariel, that's not very progressive of you. <laughs> Didn't see that. But that would be a pretty rough night for her. Yeah. She had both Ebola and was trying to walk. Or him. Yeah. Or Shim. <laughs> you can't, yeah. apparently you can't spread it until you're, until you're already, uh, until you already have symptoms. So what do you think, if this like, was it, if this hit a city or something like that, do you think it could like, kaboom and just like sort of hit everybody? No. Or it, it would just completely kill itself out by being too fast and yeah. obvious and... Yeah, I think it would just... Creepy place. I think it's too hard to spread. And I think people die relatively quickly when symptoms hit. Gotcha. So I don't think it's that dangerous. Also, in America, it. we would just... I mean, we would have a better infrastructure for quarantining the people. I mean, not to say it couldn't do some damage, but... Mm -hmm. I mean, the second you get somebody into an emergency room, then that person's, like, done. Yeah, as soon as the whole thing blows up and then everybody is kind of... Yeah. Well, Rick is paranoid sort of, like, would isolate themselves too right so like what you were saying before in like africa that would happen but if people are like oh i'm just going to my apartment and not leaving until this whole thing's over then you know right if they were infected then they'll probably be found about a week later right um that'd be pretty gross <laughs> yeah yeah that would be pretty fucking gross yeah i was gonna say i wonder how it started this time like i wonder how does it ever start right are there just like a couple about of this people? Guy and the monkey. <laughs> right. But like right, how does right. it like or girl go the monkey. latent? <laughs> or shim in the monkey. Yeah. How does it go latent and then pop back up? Is maybe it, it's maybe it's a new strand. Every time. Could be. I mean maybe. that's kind of terrifying, but Right, right. Well the other terrifying thing about all these things and avian flu is the same way, is that it's it's like mutating, or mm -hmm. usually with viruses they're like mutating all the time. So it's just mutating to get to the point where it will be more like transmit more easily mm -hmm. and you know have like a relatively high death rate so i wonder though if if it did because they've only had outbreaks in africa right i think so yeah so if there were an of outbreak in the u.s i wonder what the death rate would be maybe the death rate would drop and it might be in the hot zone that there was that there was a case in the u.s that that was what that was about oh, i read it back oh. in junior high so i don't right. remember but there was some point when they had to sterilize like a whole like it was like a restaurant right. or something like that yeah. did a bunch of people catch it i don't. This is a book I read like 15 years ago. Right. So I don't know. He, he's prefaced by saying he's not even sure it happens. Oh, yeah, because part of it was the guy got on an airplane. Right. And so I think they got him and he didn't spread it or something like that. I see. There was like one, one dude that was a potential carrier. It pretty much seems like if ever there is like some sort of like mass scale, like world spreading virus that does kill off like whatever, 90% mm -hmm. of the population, that's like airplanes are going to be the culprit. Right. Well, if it's going to do, I mean, if it's going to go Europe to the U.S., it pretty much has to be. Right. I mean, at, you know. at some point, it, it has to jump some puddle. Yeah. Not to mention, because they are these, like, recycled respiratories. They're just, like, these boxes of, like, mm -hmm. people get sick after flying all the time. They get the flu and whatever. Do you think that means that when inevitably the deadly virus hits that uh -huh. kills off most of the world's population, that right. Australia will be, the, will be the only continent that as long will as they survive? Don't get, well, think about it. If the, uh, if the disease killed people and it took more than 10 hours, right. then it would be really hard for Australia to get infected because any plane going to it, Whoa. unless the yeah. pilot thing was like, Whoa. depending on how secure the whole the whole setup was for, uh, you know, right. ventilation and stuff like that. Right. And then if that it could is be. true, would the world be repopulated by Australians? <laughs> Effectively becoming the worst version of planet. Well, the rest of us... <laughs> I was going to say the best person. Yeah, I love Australians, <laughs> man. It's like 9 out of 10 Australians are like the best person you've ever mm -hmm. met. And then 1 out of 10 Australians yeah, is like a psychopath. Yeah. yeah, One of my favorite people I've ever met was an Australian. Who, Me too. His life yeah. motto was, nothing to it, there's nothing to it but to do it. <laughs> and you know what? He was right. And nine, he, was, he was 100% right. Just chili spiced mango. Yeah. Yeah, they're great. We, it's, it's actually just chili and Ebola. We just dust it with the two. Thing. <laughs> and then you put your own label on? <laughs> we just seem fun to print out a mock Trader Joe's. We have a lot of free time. Um, but that's very terrifying. I like that idea. Mm -hmm. Like a plane getting 
10, 10 hours into an Australian flight and just crash it into the ocean. Like, because huh? the pilot decides that he's not going to be responsible for infecting Australia. No, because it, they're all going to die he just in gets 10 it. hours. Right. But that's also interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, so here's, here's an important question for you guys. What is your favorite deadly infectious disease? Great question. I was thinking about this. I want to say Black Plague because it's so classic. Right. It's and so because classic. it became like, once it was curable, it was like so curable. Right. How did they cure it? How, how did it become curable? Um, what's so, it called? Uh, oh, antibiotics. Right. Uh, this stuff from, yeah, antibiotics, this yeah. stuff from fungus. Yeah. <laughs> what is it called? Penicillin. 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 Uh huh. What else? What else? What's a good one? I mean, AIDS is classic also. AIDS is the plague of our. Like, I feel like I can joke around about Black Death a little bit more. <laughs> We're getting there with AIDS. Yeah. People are living for a really long time with AIDS. Right, yeah. Well, they had that immun the immunity um, shot inoculation. Yeah. For AIDS. Yeah, right? I I'm not sure exactly what the deal with it is. Well, for a long time, they've been saying that if you give somebody, at, when they think they've been exposed to the virus, if you give somebody a ton of antiretrovirals, you can mm -hmm. prevent them from becoming infected. And they've been doing this with babies for a really long time. Oh, and, well. and it's super effective with babies. Hmm. Um, but, yeah, but I guess they actually have, like, a vaccine now that might work. And there's a famous, like, Magic Johnson case yeah. where... Right. Although you never know with something like that if his viral load just got so low that it was not detectable. Mm hmm But if he, if he never ends up dying from AIDS, then... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, basically, effectively, like, through treatment, it seems like he's... What, is it, what are they called? T-cells or something? Yeah. But, like, whatever that count, whether it's supposed to be high or low, it's like he's able to take enough stuff to keep it away. Yeah. He's going to be in history that. books. That's, like, the, the turning point of AIDS. I don't think he tried any new treatment. I think he just... Spent a lot of money. Yeah. Well... Going to South Park. <laughs> yeah. Also, doesn't he have, like, a car dealership or something? I think, like, the turning point of AIDS is a deep the car dealership. He also has a great foundation in Los Angeles. Oh. Yeah. East Los Angeles. Gotcha. And he was the center of the Donald Sterling he controversy, was. in a weird way. Yeah, I kind of missed that. It's yeah. our, it's it's for the best. <laughs> yeah, it was stupid. It was stupid. I mean, I caught the controversy. I just didn't specifically pay attention to his role in it. Donald Sterling killed Magic Johnson. That's our story. <laughs> yeah, he shot Magic Johnson in the face. Our greatest hero with AIDS. <laughs> That's too bad. I wish I'd known about that. Wildlife. He was already famous. For Joel and the Lakers. Mm -hmm. They managed for beating AIDS and now famous for dying at the hand of Don, Don Sterling. <laughs> Wildlife, man. Um, I have some favorite diseases, but they're not infectious diseases. Okay. Or they're not really diseases, actually. <laughs> Ice cream. <laughs> 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 no, that's a food. They're, they're conditions, I guess. Okay. Peanut butter. <laughs> Tim, uh, Ariel's top. Top three conditions of all time, <laughs> or infectious diseases. Well, these are just the ones that I'm that I'm convinced are going to happen to me someday. Okay. I'm really convinced and terrified that I'm going to get botulism. I don't even know what botulism is. Oh, great! Well, learn. Step up to the plate. Botulism <laughs> is the festival of life. <laughs> botulism is a it's a bacteria, but I think, and I could be wrong about this. I think the the way that you get sick from it is the toxin that the bacteria produces in anaerobic environments. So you get it from eating canned food. Um, and if you, so like, this was what, what people used to be terrified about with canned food. Like why mm -hmm. you like people say you have to eat it, heat it up or never eat like a dented can. Um, so I'm just terrified that I'm going to eat a can of, of botulism. Are you, are you facing a situation where you have to can fruit, right? Anything that's low acid. So it could be fruit or like green beans were like apparently the biggest cul culprit. Okay. I've had that can of green beans for literally four years. I'm not even kidding. We should throw it away. We should. <laughs> I think you should eat it just to show botulism what's up. Just to like get over this fear. Like eat that and then just be like, if it wasn't in the green beans that I'm Well, apparently all you have to do is heat it up and you're fine. But green beans were a big culprit because people eat them a lot straight out of the can, or they used to, back when people were gross. What about like canned peaches or something? I think that, canned peaches, like canned pineapple, like all the time. So I think that also was a problem, but I think if you put enough sugar in it, it's okay. Like, I think now canning processes are so well done mm -hmm. that it's not really a worry. And they say it's not actually a dented can to worry about. It's a... It's a, a puffed out can. That's right. Yeah, that's the one that has botulism in it. Gotcha. All right, so that's one. Wait, why are you so afraid of it, though? What is it? 
what just, happens when you get oh, botulism? Yeah, right. Oh, well, when you get it, it's not that, so I think it's, it's that your muscles basically stop working. So you like can't, eventually you can't breathe because you just like none of your muscles work anymore. Oh, wow. It's the opposite of tetanus where your muscles get really stiff. You know, ah, with okay. botulism, your muscles just become super limp. You yeah. just kind of like, you just kind of like gel. Yeah. You just kind of like, yeah. Like when I, when I'm like, with like smoked a joint and I'm like yeah. on the couch yeah. and it's just, but like times like a hundred. That's yeah. what botulism is just like you smoke yeah. that like chronic doobie. Like <laughs> really strong. Yeah. <laughs> Or if you know what a bamboozler is, uh-huh. <laughs> it's like that. It's that, like you used a bamboozler. Yeah, that would be a Completely. great like name for a strain of weed at a, like a, a head shop. Botulism. Yeah. <laughs> two two questions from from what you're saying. And I have a question too. Okay. I need to fit in at some point. Okay. You want to go first? No, go ahead. Okay. Do, do you guys know that you could be just as much of an expert as I am if you had taken the class called Bioterrorism and Society? It was a really famous or, class at UCLA. Yeah, Bioterrorism and Warfare or something like that at UCLA. Okay, I have two questions now. The first one is, <laughs> do you think that really made you an expert? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't rhetorical. Answer the question. <laughs> yeah. I do. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's not a bad start. Okay. Second question. Oh, go ahead. No, I'll do my two afterwards. Um, they're very long. Kind of like, just, to, you, just sorry, just to augment why I think I'm an expert. We did have to read a fiction book in that class as part of the assigned reading. Oh, that's any bio, good bioterrorist <laughs> has read at least one fiction book. <laughs> yeah. Um, this seems pretty avoidable. Botulism? Yeah. I do you know. Think, do you think you pretty much got this covered? I do. You don't have also, to worry about it so much? Well, they, it used to be that there was no treatment, so like, or there was a treatment, but like, they oh. only kept it at this, like, they have like one stock of it that they kept in like Washington, D.C. But now apparently it's they do have the treatment, and it takes, like, a while to get it, but, like, a couple of hours or something. Gotcha. So back then, like if you, you got, got it, it, it was it. bad. Yeah. Oh, and, oh, that's what's so terrifying about it. Like, if you get it, you pretty much are, like, guaranteed to die. I think the, oh, my professor gotcha. in that class said it was the most toxic, um, like, like animal-produced substance. I forget what the word is. Wow. It's not produced by plants, but it's... Oh, no. It's okay. not... Because the most toxic substance is ricin, mm-hmm. and botulism is the most toxic, like, non-plant-made substance. Mm-hmm. Fans of Breaking Bad will notice ricin, which is <laughs> yeah. very heavily in the show. Or most toxic organic substance, I guess. I'm sure there are non-organic substances that are more toxic than that. Um, my two questions are this. One, lockjaw, which is from tetanus. Is that a weird thing where it really it's your whole body that's locked up, but people just call it lockjaw and it's just your... Like, I or think is so. It, or is it I think maybe just your jaw, your jaw so. hits first, yeah. I think. Question two. Someone gets a really bad case of tetanus and therefore lockjaw. Can you give them a puffed out can of green beans and sort of <laughs> mellow, mellow the two things out? You just got to find the right balance. I I've been titrating right. perfectly, just keeping the balance between botulism and tetanus. Living that very happy life. Uh oh, now Ariel's too loose. Give her some more tetanus. <laughs> too much. Just give her that doobie. <laughs> That's fantastic. That'd be a cool nothing. <laughs> a be- cool side plot in a. Harold and Kumar movie. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Where they get tetanus and then balance it out with the botulism. Benji, what about you? Favorite disease, infectious right. or otherwise? Okay. Well, extra, extra points for uh, grossness or badassness. <laughs> well, I'll tell you my biggest fear, of, uh, uh, like a natural way of dying, which is like dying of dehydration from, from diarrhea. Which, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> I like sometimes if I'm having a particular <laughs> that could be an infectious disease like if you it's got malaria it's, or cholera that's like one of the biggest causes of death I think right uh, yeah probably like, for, for babies mm-hmm. my friend Stephen has this idea uh, that it's or just like that they are like these nonprofits that want to go help people because like yeah there's some cu- countries where like the biggest cause of death is diarrhea mm-hmm. and he's like well, I think it's I malaria think, I think it's like often that, for, for infants or dysentery or something yeah but he was like, if you just wanted to focus on that, it would be so hard to like raise money and be like, come to our gala dinner for raising diarrhea awareness. <laughs> I don't think that's what it's called. Well, it will be. And actually, be like, it is called like diarrhea illness. Yeah. In like the a picture of somebody with diarrhea and then like an X through it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No more. Timmy was a happy diarrhea having kid. <laughs> so he had too much diarrhea. And he died. Uh, yeah, the marketing on that one's pretty tough. <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely admit. Um, let's see what else. What else I have in the in the fear of diseases realm. My other one is Jakob Creutzfeldt syndrome. <laughs> what is that? It's mad cow disease, but mm-hmm. mad cow disease you get from eating like infected meat. Cows. Yeah, mad cows. It's in the name. <laughs> yeah, but Jakob Creutzfeldt syndrome is the same exact ailment, 
but it just affects one in a million people randomly. So anybody could get it, and it's mm-hmm. totally random, and it's one in a million, which to me seems too high. <laughs> what is it? So you know that people use what the does phrase it do, one in a million. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I told somebody. So you're saying there's... <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You're using dumb and dumber logic to think you're... Uh-huh. I also think that means that like 60 people in the U.S. have it or something like that. That's what they know. I, having known you for a long time, I also feel like if it's one in a million, you may think sometimes like, oh, that means I probably have it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So okay. what, is it, what does it do? Um, what is This that disease that you do? definitely, crazy, definitely right? surely it, have. It, it causes... I don't remember exactly, but I think... It, it's a prion, which is neither a virus nor a bacteria. And, okay. And I think um, it's. It, I think it causes um, holes in your brain, essentially. Like it, something about the way a prion works. It like kind of eats away at um, your like your muscle or like gray matter or whatever. Mm. Well, it's pretty sexy. Yeah. And then and then like as different parts of your brain dissolve away. So if you're just one in a million, like that's it. Just your brain starts melting. Yeah. Hmm. Oh my god. And there's nothing. There's literally <laughs> nothing to do about it. There's no cure or anything. Because why invest money in a cure for something that affects just melts your, Just melts your brain. I'll talk about two more things, neither of which are infectious diseases, but just fears I have of dying. That's okay. a science podcast, right? Oh, well, of course. You should do a podcast that's just a million ways to it's die. It's kind of what the... Um, well, I think Seth MacFarlane is like, kind of like tainted that as a name yes, for anything. Yes, don't, forever. Okay, don't, you're right. Don't call yeah. it that. Call it um, Death Wish. Um, but what's science in figuring out like badass things to that can like right. kill you basically? Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So here are the two things. One is I'm. Re- this is not going to kill me. Well, mm-hmm. it could. It's super long. Run. One of my big fears is like you know how they say like men, right around that like late twenties age have like the, the risk of like a psychotic break. So oh, okay. Where you, where you just like, like, you specifically schizophrenia. I got three months until thirty, so I'm Dude, almost at the end there. Hang on. <laughs> Prop fingers crossed. I'm almost there. Yeah. So I'm terrified of that. But here's a weird thing. Um, I used to smoke pot and I used to smoke cigarettes and I do neither of them anymore. But even when I did do them, whenever I would empty, someone early on in my life told me that like inhaling laundry lint is like, like going to kill you immediately. It's like so bad for your lungs. Mm-hmm. So even when I was like smoking, whatever, like 10 cigarettes a day, I would still, every time I did the laundry, I would like hold my breath. <laughs> Okay. For, like the entire time for fear that I still like the basket out in front yeah, of you with yeah. your arm stiff yeah. just like face uh-huh. to the yeah. side just like that's exactly no. right did you guys hear about are you, are you done with that I am you're afraid that laundry line is going to kill you mm-hmm. did you guys hear about um, like delayed drowning it's this thing you told me about it and now no. I'm terrified and I'm never having children apparently this is a thing that happens to kids and there were all these like public a not, what's it called a public service announcement about mm-hmm. um Kids go swimming and then they like uh, accidentally inhale a bunch of water, but they're fine. Like they're not mm-hmm. drowning. And then, but the water's still in their lungs because they don't get it all out. And then something happens and then they die. Maybe like they lay down and it gets like, cl- yeah. Right. Like I mean, I think, right. Exactly. They, mm. they suffocate essentially. And I think it causes inflammation and then slowly you like, you have trouble breathing and then there's, and then it's like pneumonia or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have to ingest something like, a full like two full cups of water it seems crazy though that you can have that much in your lungs right and not feel it right. I've, I've like i've accidentally like drank like, in, like inhaled right yeah both water and gatorade before <laughs> on separate occasions <laughs> and they're both like the most painful experience right. of my entire yeah. life yeah like there would be no like I it know. seems like insane that you could not notice it, right. well they specifically said it happens to little kids a lot and i wonder if maybe the little kids aren't like Telling their parents or something, right. and maybe they're not used to it too. Maybe their like reactions a little different or right. something. It seems like that's exactly the kind of thing that medicine, the existence of modern medicine, will never weed out. But should be like evolutionarily, in a billion years from now, human beings, which won't exist anyway because we're, we're all going to die from. Well, stars. Australians will exist. Yeah, Australians. Australians. A billion years. From Everybody's now. Australian. <laughs> World is great. Rugby is huge. <laughs> Everybody's pretty happy. Uh huh. It's now a planet full of criminals. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Way to go with the 150 year old stereotype there. <laughs> Sticking to it, man. Yeah. Lay into those Australians. Uh, I'll tell you some of these mix, too. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
a billion years from now, we should have separate holes for this. The fact that we just like <laughs> that you can just breathe food or or liquid into your lungs mm -hmm. is a garbage design. But we want them. I am. But we should. Because we'll be should. dead. Because we'll be dead. Because <laughs> the the SARS and the Australians. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, because the Australians will survive and then just kill each other like a bunch of animals <laughs> they are. Well, Rupert Murdoch's Australian, so like they've actually got kind of a precedent for shitbags taking over the world. Yeah. I like Australians. I do too. Mm -hmm. For the record, Benji Kleiman, fan of the Australians. <laughs> Benji Kleiman. Love Australian lover right here. <laughs> I'm not a fighter. I'm an Australian lover. <laughs> I'm not an Australian fighter. Do you guys um, want to get into some science fiction movies that have come out or that you have yes. recently yes. seen? Yes. Always. We just saw All You Need. Uh, God damn it. Edge of Tomorrow. Uh huh. Have you seen that? Oh, no, I haven't. It's well, we won't talk about it because it's really fun and you should see it. And I don't want to ruin it for you, but mm -hmm. it's fantastic. Yeah. Like time travel thing, looping over the same mm -hmm. day, Tom Cruise and an exoskeleton. So every, every part of that is as cool as it sounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what are He's been doing a lot of sci-fi. I, yeah. I watched Oblivion. I rewatched Oblivion pretty did recently. You like it? I thought it was awesome. Yeah, really. I didn't totally. love it, but I did. I did think it was really like a cool idea and mm -hmm. really cool. Like, like the house they live in. Is oh yeah, yeah. The the style is awesome. Yeah, I think really how much awesome. you like the movie probably depends on how much you like the twist. You know. Yeah, but that did you already fucking, tell me the twist? Oh, yeah, you told me the whole movie, the plot of the whole movie. <laughs> I'm picturing you, like, acting it out, like, like and then, and then oh, he, like, gets in the, he gets in the jet fighter thing, and he's like, <laughs> and then the drones, are, those had those were cool drones in that. That was awesome. They were really cool. Yeah. Yeah, they were cool. I have this thing about Morgan Freeman in movies when he appears from the shadows mm -hmm. out of nowhere, which he does in, like, 40 movies. I mean, this might have been his best one. Yeah, yeah, the, the match is, like, as good as it's going to get. <laughs> Yeah. Literally, this is scene Batman <coughs> begins. Bruce Wayne is in bed, and Alfred mm -hmm. is talking to him. And he goes, "How did I survive?" And just like from behind the curtain in his bedroom, Morgan Freeman walks out, like he was just <laughs> hiding in Bruce Wayne's bedroom. Whoa! Yeah. yeah, I've been watching you sleep, Mister Wayne. Um, what are some other good sci-fi movies? What were some? What was some of the good science in um, Edge of Tomorrow? Like I know there's a triumph time travel thing, which while cool. There isn't a whole lot of like. There wasn't a lot of science, but there's exo there's exo suits or something, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't really go into it. There wasn't a lot of science in Edge of Tomorrow. It, it really wasn't. In fact, unlike most science fiction, the big science fiction logic was very, felt very made up. Unlike you know. Yeah, it felt oh, like, like just magic like, science fiction, which is our proton plasters. Right, and, like yeah, they were yeah. like, well, they're like time travel is a now an assumed thing, so right. without like explaining anything about it. Yeah. Or, like, going into any paradoxes or anything mm -hmm. like that. But there was a cool alien design in the sense that there were these, like, drone aliens, which they described. They, like, the whole alien race was, like, one hive mind, which is not anything new to alien mm -hmm. movies. You're spoiling it. I don't care to spoil it. Spoiler alert. Well, no, I'm not going to spoil it too much, but just... That's a spoil. The, the, that's it's a hive mind. mind. It's spoiled. Okay, well, if it's spoiling, uh, then I would like to... I heard about the like the time travels and like the blood of the aliens or something. Oh, so you know the whole plot. I know the whole plot of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so I've done um, nothing wrong. <laughs> no, but um, is it, does that come off? Like that sounded really cheesy, but I didn't. No, they do a great job with it. Yeah. It's okay. Really fun. The whole yeah. movie is a movie that, in lesser hands of the director, writer, and actor, mm -hmm. could have been such a cheese ball fest. Okay. But instead, it's so fun. Yeah, it's very really fun. funny, which I'm sure you've been hearing because it's true. It's great. Yeah. Really highly recommend seeing it in theaters. It's a delightful like run. Blonde. Yeah, she's great. She's, maybe she's her best so role. good in this yeah, movie. Oh, she's wow. great, yeah. Um, I did have some, Oh, well, one of my favorite sci-fi movies is Minority Report, which also stars Tom Cruise. He's been doing a lot of sci-fi yeah. movies lately. He always does a lot of science fiction, I yeah. think, mm -hmm. right? Well, he can hold down a sci-fi action movie. Yeah. In a way that like, I think like, a lot of actors can. Uh -huh. Yeah. He calls them science fiction. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's more like the more net buyer he gets in real life, the more like he can just like pump out like pretty good movies. I, I think, think he's just like I'm fighting aliens for real. <laughs> yeah. Do you think he got into into Scientology because he was already an L. Ron Hubbard fan because he had seen Battlefield Earth? Because he had read Earth, Battlefield Earth. Right. Oh, because he's in it. Is he in it? No, that's no, John You looked at me mm -hmm. like I was a crazy person for saying that. Just the idea that he had that, that the movie Battlefield Earth. 
would convince anyone. <laughs> but maybe. It was the dreadlocks. Is, is That's Dr. why. Is the bad guy in that movie? Yes. I'm sure think so. as shit looks like it. Mm-hmm. I remember I had no idea what the... Con- I had I'd never heard the word Scientology. And I loved John Travolta as a kid, not from Pulp mm-hmm. Fiction, but from Broken Arrow and from... Or he's not in Bro- Is he in Broken Arrow? He's in Broken Arrow, too. And Christian Slater. Right, and Face Off. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what is... I was like, well, Battlefield Earth must be great. Because <laughs> <laughs> John Travolta never does a bad movie. Oh, right. so you saw it not knowing that it was like... Uh, like no idea. That it was like the Scientology movie right. and... Is it the Scientology it movie? It is, yeah. Because he, he tried to get it made a couple times or something like that. And like John Travolta basically got it made got the funding for it I think like kind of pushed the whole thing it was like his project wow and I don't know if you've seen it like it looks like it was made for like 15 bucks <laughs> yeah it's I haven't seen terrible it. sounds yeah. great I remember it was the first time ever as a kid that I like could t- like you know when you see movies as a kid you don't think like oh this looks cheap or expensive you're just like it's a movie mm-hmm. whatever and I was like this looks terrible mm-hmm. um, we thought you, you were the one that pointed out to me I think that After Earth that Will Smith movie mm-hmm. yeah. seems like a Scientology fest too. It is. You can tell from the preview. So? It's, it's all the tenets of. It's written by Will Smith. Yeah. Yes. It's written by Will Smith, and um, it was like M Night Shyamalan directed it. Yeah, but his name was not on it very much. Yeah. Apparently, really? he's like not allowed to write scripts anymore, or something like that. M Night Shyamalan. Yeah. Is he a Scientologist? No. Oh. He's just really hacky. Yeah. Um, the well, I, at the Earth, I mean, if it's like. In my opinion, like it looked terrible. I didn't right, see it. I didn't see it. Either. But you can tell from the preview that it's just like L. Ron Hubbard's philosophy. It's like a mm-hmm. Dianetics philosophy. Yeah. Uh, what else is coming out this summer? Guardians of the Galaxy. Very cool. Kind of more superhero y. Yeah. And also space opera more than science fiction. Well, I like the, I like a good space opera. Yes. Yeah. And it's been a while since I've seen a good space opera. Right? Well, they aren't there aren't very many good yeah, space there are operas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What else? John Carter. Okay, that I was like famously that. like bombed. Like I think it lost the most. So yep. one of lost like almost more money than anything I think else. It might be the play. kind of a good space opera though. Really? And there's like a whole scene. It's sort of like it's like way too long. It's like really long and like lots of like like blah 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 from this planet is like something. There's like lots of names and stuff like that. Right. But I then there's also too. scenes where he's like running and jumping on Mars, and it's like the lesser gravity, and it's really cool, cool. and like yeah. I've heard there are some that the cool parts of that movie are really cool, but that's like an hour of of expo- like talking exposition. And yeah, I, it's like it's like su- like Sunday. If it's on TV on a Sunday, just throw it on and like do something else. Yeah, yeah. I, that I was great. I was ready to think that it was going to be good because of what happened with the Lone Ranger, which was yeah. a huge flop, and everyone hated it. And I thought it was delightful. It was great. I saw that movie. Tonto was the only part I could like even like take. Really, and, you didn't like Army Hammer? No, I did not like her hammer. <laughs> Sorry. Aww, no, but I thought Johnny Depp Tonto was really great, except for the fact that like it was just like so racist. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, that was. I didn't I know that quite was, how to like. That was pretty how bad. To, like, well, he is like a sixteenth chair. He is. Mm-hmm. So. Well, and he kind of played it as like like a crazy person. Like remember they go and they're talking to the rest of the tribe and they're like talk normally. You know they don't yeah. have the accent. Right. He, yeah, right. he kind of played like this was a guy who was playing up being Native American in the world of the movie. Mm-hmm. Right. Speaking of good science fiction, best science fiction I've seen in the past five years is Looper. Yeah, Looper's pretty good. Did you like Looper? I did. I did. Didn't love it. I saw it twice in the theater. It's pretty good. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Pretty good movie. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, That also didn't have a lot of science in it. They had those bikes. I I think it's, I think sometimes it's hard in movies to express a lot of science. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's sort of like, and that was, and I thought Looper, actually what I liked about it is like, it was like the future was just like kind of like more rundown version of what we got right now. Right. For the For the most part. Yeah, it was very much like a Blade Runner-y, but like even pared down from Blade Runner. Ooh, it had future drugs in it too. Did you have future <laughs> yeah. drugs? I yeah. I thought that was a good future drug. Yeah. Eye drops? Great. Cool, mm-hmm. cool idea, eye drops. Um, like, it, like I, I hate in movies when the future drug is like a vapor puff. I don't know, right. for some reason, even though if if one thing is proving true with those fucking e-cigarettes, it's probably the closest thing to reality. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I don't know why I was thinking that. Was or in, um, you ever see Robocop 2? Of course. And they have like the thing they have to like inject into yeah. their neck. Right. Did you see the recent Robocop? No, I didn't. I did. I did. You did too? Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah, you liked it. I did like it. I'm pretty easy. I like most movies. I thought that movie was okay. Um, 
not great. Let's hear, let's hear a quick review for our podcast listeners from Benji and Ariel. Okay. Um, you go first. Well, Robocop. I thought the, the main the actor mm-hmm. that played Robocop was excellent. Okay. Agreed. Um, yeah, I thought he was really fun was to watch. I was not ready to like him at all. I'm really was it like Joel, yeah. Joel Kinnaman or something like that? Yes, it was Joel Kinnaman. What else has he been in? Nothing. Okay. Let's, let's look it up real quick. While you're talking, I'll look it mm-hmm. up. I think he might have been in Pacific Rim. I'm not sure. I saw Pacific Rim. Did you see that? I, I, mm-hmm. I saw it on my birthday last year. I fell asleep in the theater. I fell asleep in the theater, too. Really? I also put that up as my worst movie I saw in the theater last year. Mm. It was a movie that was like, should have been a, this is why you still go to the theater to see a movie. And I was like, well, yeah, I'd go to the theater to sleep in a movie. <laughs> and yeah, and then I saw it and I was like, this is why like, fucking Transformers has made movies terrible. Yep. And, yeah. and I hear people go like, fuck Transformers. It's all about Pacific Rim. Like, people movie love Pacific Oh, Rim. it's like, yeah, it's like the, yeah, people really, really, really like it. And I, I talk, like, I've tried to like it so hard. There was, I want to like yeah, it so me too. bad. There were six shots, um, that's um, mm-hmm. approximately six shots in that movie, that were really cool. I did think, I'll say this, it really captured the scale mm-hmm. somehow. Like the, the monsters and robots felt... Actually, I thought that was my problem. Is like really? It was all close up in, in the sea. and like in the sea I never side. had any idea. Yes. They always fought in the sea. The whole no, thing took place in the sea. That's true. The best thing in that whole movie mm-hmm. is, the, is the flashback with the girl... Yeah, that was pretty cool. Because that's the only scene that has any real stakes and feels like it's kind of not a video game. Mm-hmm. What are you watching? Anyway, go back. Ariel, to- could you recap the plot of Robocop in maybe like Seven six words? sentences? Okay. Um, let's see. I, I mean, it wasn't that good, so I don't remember it that well. But uh, All-Star Cop gets shot, I'm assuming. or No, his car gets blown up by... Uh, um, some criminal, dude by a criminal, mm-hmm. and then he is like becomes a part of this like mega corporation has this new idea to like make these RoboCops to like help with crime because crime's a big problem in the future in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, so they basically like take his brain and put it inside this robot machine, um, and and then the rest of the movie is kind of like like at what point does he stop becoming a man and mm-hmm. start becoming a machine, mm-hmm. just like a killing machine, and it's all about his like relationship with his family and like. Um, like whether he is still a man or whether he is like now just a robot, and then the corporation just wants to turn him into a robot and then make like all of these like like robot people, cops, ro- robo cops, if As you will. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she's that's doing, where the name comes from. She's doing air quotes around <laughs> robo cops. You can see. Um, um, yeah, and that's what happens. Okay, that's true. Uh, I thought it was to all that is true, and it was more enjoyable than I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. I went with very low expectations. Me too. And had them, and was not that impressed. But one of my big things is, as we all know, like Batman Begins ushered in this era of like the dark, gritty reboot. Everything has to be dark and gritty. Yeah. Now I'm not saying this movie was so dark and gritty, although it's definitely more dark and gritty than the original. But it had literally it had the line in it, which I think I've seen in ten dark, gritty reboots, which is they're looking at the costume, and someone goes, "Does it come in black?" Oh my and then it's like a smash cut to the costume That's in black. so bad. Yeah, I feel like I've seen that in like a and dozen movies scene, too. Michael Keaton is in this movie. And yeah. he's fantastic in it. He, plays, part of the he movie. plays the bad guy. Yeah, but he's the best part of the movie. Yeah, he's great. I hope he comes back. So it's beating more movies. He's in a movie right now, mm-hmm. which apparently is great. I haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. Called Birdman. Which is about... I did hear about that, yeah. Yeah, it's about an actor who was famous for playing a superhero. And then, now is like starting to go loopy in his old age. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's funny. Should be great. Yeah, he's 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 a great man. <laughs> he's a, a great man. A real inspiration. I had another good sci-fi movie to talk about. Um, what about her sci-fi? Movie I feel now? like changing the subject from Robocop like kind of says enough. Where like <laughs> nobody really was like, eh, it's all right. I wouldn't recommend it. No, you couldn't. Recommend but if they you released some, they released something online where it was like him fighting a bunch of like flying robots or like helicopters or something, and it was kind of cheesy looking. Where he was like doing flips and like yeah shooting. It's it's pretty. I mean, it's yeah. like a mediocre attempt at, mm-hmm. at a science fiction reboot. One thing I liked about it that I could never get over, even though I understand the story of the original Robocop is great, and mm-hmm. like, it's a great whatever commentary and whatever, I just never liked how slow and clunky Robocop was. Mm-hmm. And he's like really agile in this version, yeah. which is pretty cool. But I will take, I, I have to like point out the fact that you call this grittier than the original. And the original is like one of the most violent movies that like used to give me nightmares and shit. Really? Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's when they like you know, sh- when they kill him in the beginning. Yeah, that's the a original is pretty gritty, but the TV show was mm-hmm. yeah. was super campy. Yes, yeah. 
That's right. Well, and, and the, the sequels were good. And the original was also kind of like campy too. It was like almost right. like a little bit spoofy. That, that's right. what I mean by yes. It, it, it wasn't. Right. It wasn't super serious. The original was gritty but not dark. Mm-hmm. Whereas this was dark but not gritty. Yeah. It was a little like a kind of a downer. Yeah. 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 So did you like her, the Spike Jones one? I the sci-fi part of it I loved. I thought mm-hmm. the sci-fi the sci-fi kernel was an interesting idea. I didn't think he did much with it. I'm about to spoil the shit out of this movie. Like, the whole plot aside, at the end, isn't, you know, when she's like, oh, me and the other intelligences, yeah. isn't it just like, oh, so that's the end of the world, right? That's like the robot revolution starting right there. <laughs> he Maybe, see, it, it, but they're like benevolent robots, though. In or, he they're just, not robots, they're he, AIs. Yeah. They were just learning their power, though. Maybe. I thought that was cool, because I kind of thought, to me, it seemed like he was saying... There is another plane of existence, and mm-hmm. AI can tap into it, and like, hey, maybe us too someday. And like, mm-hmm. they, they get it, and they're moving on. I do think his vision of AI was seen much more hopeful than me too. Than dark. Yes. When I say that I love the sci-fi stuff in the movie, not so much the plot of the mm-hmm. OS. I thought that was like whatever. I mean, it's fine. I just thought his future scape was, was cool. awesome. Yeah. I thought it was cool. I like the high waisted pants a lot. It's, me too. I like the big. Extended LA subway system. The LA subway do, system. Do you know that awesome. it was filmed part in LA, half in LA, half in Tokyo? Uh, half, half in Shanghai. In Shanghai. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so you didn't know that. Uh-huh. But yeah, no, but it, but they but they blended it really well though. Yeah. Because the whole thing looked like job. big giant metropolitan LA basically. Yeah. He talked about in an interview that he really tried to avoid any exterior shots that had cars in them mm-hmm. because cars are so hard to not timestamp in your mind. Right. The one and reason- cars look oh, gotcha. so silly when you try to make them look futuristic. Right, you, yeah. gonna, and even if you make them look futuristic, because he did a really good job of not saying 30 years in the future, 40, 100, 200, he just said... Future. Well, he kind of like developed like a full... And I said the high waisted pants, but I actually sort of liked that he developed like a full style. Yeah. Like people had kind of a very consistent fashion that was like a little bit tweaked from what we have now, but it's like how like I think like a lot of people now might look to... If you had like a movie about us in the 80s or something, yeah. you know? It, it, he didn't do what some people do that I think is so stupid that like oh yeah all of a sudden people are going to start wearing jumpsuits everywhere like right. that's space jumpsuits clothes. are impractical we've all agreed that jumpsuits right. are not they sweat this. a lot <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're uncomfortable right if you have a different sized torso it's not going to work for you if you like meet a cute girl and you're trying to get frisky it's yeah. like you gotta like do the whole thing yeah Heavy petting becomes a totally different thing. Yeah. So does peeing and pooping. Peeing and pooping. <laughs> but even if even if you made them not jumpsuits, like even if it was just like mm-hmm. tops and bottoms that were all uniform, like people don't, pe- not since not at any point have people all dressed uniform. It's like the Google glasses again. If it doesn't look cool, I'm not gonna wear it. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, he did a really good job of just defining the entire, not leaving anything unthought out, so that when you watch it, it just washes over you. Like, oh, this is this future escape. You don't think like. Wait, that's wrong. I have a question for you. Yeah. What did you guys think about the directorial choice to give every character in the movie like mustache? Oh, yeah, Amy Adams mustache. <laughs> she does have a good mustache. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Never called a mustache sexy before. Okay. <laughs> but sorry, to give every single character in the movie. Oh, like a, the like a very very intentionally pointless job. What like the one that? guy wrote letters. That. Amy she, Adams had some job. I she's forget a what video it was, game but designer. it was she, for like moms. There's like a mom's video game. Remember, it was like... Oh, that's right. Okay, so that sounds like, like totally... He was like, can you masturbate against the fridge? Remember that? Yeah. And who else? Um, well, the the boyfriend the had some in. job, but I remember... I don't remember what it was, but it was like... Wasn't someone like an aspiring filmmaker or something? Like, oh, yeah. It, oh, and she was talking about her movie, and yeah. it was, she was like, what if yeah. it's like dreams, but it's not dreams? Right. Right. It's kind of like got the impression like Spike Jones doesn't have a really high opinion of people. That's, that's interesting. interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm trying I to... think I actually felt that way too. Mm-hmm. I think that was one of my complaints about the movie that he like yeah, none of the none of the human characters it kinda of seemed like all the human characters were there to show how great the AIs were and how like mediocre people were. But yeah, I wasn't that but I mean I get yeah. Yeah, kind of. Like everyone seemed really sort of like beat down. Yeah. And like but the AI too I like to have gotten the thing where she was like basically like kind of like reading his emails a little too much and stuff like that. Right, yeah. right. That was cool. Because that's sort of like, that's a direction of kind of like our future that I don't know how to, not that I'm dating robots, but it's just like, <laughs> but even if you're just dating where another, pri- where's privacy yeah. end and right. where does it begin and stuff like that. Well, the yeah. Supreme Court has a lot to say about that. Mm-hmm. That's true. Um, I have a theory about Spike Jones's view on people, which is, you know how like that thing of like how, like whenever you see a movie, the guy's job is like architect or, or ad- advertisement consultant mm-hmm. or something? What, the reason I think that is, is 
it's like some writer who's like, I'm pretty well off. I have a creative job. Mm -hmm. This is all I know. What's a job that's like that where I'm not going to call him a screenwriter? Like a novelist is not oh, analog to a screenwriter at all. You mm -hmm. know? So they're never novelists. Right. You know, even like in Woody Allen movies, he's always like a TV writer or a, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so like, I, that's why I think they choose those jobs. It's like essentially you're a, like a, a, a high paid freelancer in a creative field. Yeah. Like, you know, so that's, and then, okay, so then his life can be like my life. That's mm -hmm. what I think. Yeah. And Spike Jones, I know, is a rich kid. And I should preface this by saying I love Spike. I think he's a great director. He directed one of my all time favorite movies, which is being John Malkovich. And now he's a super successful artist. And I just think he gave this people jobs. Like, what's a creative? Okay, he writes letters. Like, that's kind of creative. And, like, she does video games. And I just think he probably has the malaise, and him, he and his friends, of being like, well, that was the that was sort of the thing. Is like he was writing. Everyone kept being like, "You're so good at writing yeah. these fake love letters for other people," and then like the girl, his, you know, his Amy Adams was like, "Put it in a book," and it's like treated as this very sweet moment when you're like, like, no, like if you have that job, like you don't tell people you have that job, right? You right. know, like it's yeah, I, I did. It's I never, like well, I do think his job was a was a specific. Like metaphor or symbol for the emotional situation. That yeah. He's in. Oh, completely. But but right because it was. But then like the real world dealing with it was like they treated it as if it was like genuine. Right. As it if was it like, wasn't oh, you're an embarrassing a yeah. job. Yeah. yeah. Or as if like writing love letters for someone else when he was sort of, they're like oh these are so touching they're so and like you know, like as it, like I feel like that would sap all the emotion out of it for me I couldn't read a fake love letter and be like right this is this is a work of art. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. remember if they addressed this in the movie or if, or if I just wondered it the whole time, but do the people that get the love letters know that they're written by someone else? I think they say they don't, but if you lived in a world where that was a thing, right. I guess it's like faking an orgasm, but maybe you'd know it's a thing, <laughs> but you wouldn't believe, you know, you wouldn't believe your partner would do it. Like, right. you'd be like, oh no, these are real love letters. Right. Or maybe it just, it's like, posits that it's a world where it's gotten to the point where if somebody pays someone else to write you a love letter, it's still like, oh, that's so sweet. I mean, yeah. there was it's a little the, bit of a sci-fi. I mean, a little bit of like how things are done on computers now. Like, I do think there was that element too because nobody judged anyone for dating an AI, mm -hmm. and I, yeah. and that was something that you didn't expect going into it. Like, yeah. you yeah. would have think you would have thought the premise was that everybody was like, "You're crazy." That was actually one of my favorite turns of the movie because I just saw another movie that did something kind of similar. Do you guys have any friends that have ever dated an, 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 an inanimate object? Like, had like. <laughs> A sex doll, they were like a little two and two or anything like that. No, I think the closest I've had is people who have long distance, like, like on yeah, AIM. Really yeah, yeah. I remember like with someone they haven't met. Yeah, I had a friend in high school okay. who had like a long. -term, yeah, this was all high school. Yeah, like AIM thing or like MySpace or something. And then he 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 finally she flew out when his parents were out of town. And they just like had sex all weekend long. Wow, was so so that's a pretty nice move for high school. Yeah. Oh yeah. This guy was like one of those guys that like was too into porn too early, you know, like you would like go to his house and be like, I'm gonna show you something and you'd look at it and you you wouldn't even be like, Oh cool, you'd be like, I'm fucking freaked out. Yeah, like, this is Yeah. You know, I didn't like, sign up for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, she could shoot a nerf ball out of that thing. You know? <laughs> and I was like, Am I supposed to is that good? Is that what I'm asking for now? Um, have you? You implied that like you knew somebody with me. No, I hadn't. Well, there's been watched. a bunch of movies about it recently. Yeah. Like Lars and the Real Girl. Right. And yeah. this. Have you... Uh, this is kind of a sci-fi science thing. Mm -hmm. There's this a device, the flashlight. Mm -hmm. Have you ever met a man that's ever used one? Uh, not... I know one person that used one experimentally or something. No, like they like got it from like, like a convention. Thing. Yeah. Exactly. I've never met anyone that's ever used one, but like, they seem like weirdly more ubiquitous than they probably are. Maybe that's just like a good... Well, I know a lot of guys with flashlights, so maybe. You know. <laughs> it's such a weird idea that that's what's. I mean, I get it why it's. Mm -hmm. It's shaped that way for no no relation to a flashlight. It's just that that's a good shape for a sex toy. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, it kind of looks like that. Let's call it that. But I feel like. Throw a flashlight on there. Throw a flashlight on there. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, thought that, I thought it was. I thought they. Well, I thought it was like. I thought it was supposed to like resemble a flashlight. It does, but, but not as in the like sense. It's like a disguise thing? Not in the sense of a disguise. It, well, what I've heard about it basically is that, like, it's pretty awkward, because if you're a dude, and, like, you're used to, you know, jerking off, basically, right? that doing it with, like, five pounds of metal in your hand is pretty weird. <laughs> it's made of metal? Or something? Well, yeah, I mean, it's got, like, a casing. Well, yeah, and, right. It's weird. But it's definitely mm -hmm. not your penis in your hand. 
There's also lots of like themed ones apparently. Like yeah. you can get like yeah. anime ones, like which Game is, like, of Thrones. Yeah, Game of yeah. Thrones ones. But not like they look like a person. They just look like like they look the equivalent of like a themed flashlight. Mm-hmm. Do you guys think that having a relationship with maybe on the inside it's like they they're it like feels like Game of Thrones. It's like if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's like I don't know uh, what I'm saying, but if you do, Cersei Lannister or whatever. I've never seen the show. Do we think? Do you think that having a relationship with an like a an inanimate object like a like an expensive sex doll that you get like custom made is really that different from being like really obsessed with one of your pets? Not maybe not being dogs <laughs> because. Well, it's kind of like trading like less personality than a human to no personality. I know, and I know animals do have personalities, but a lot of people think that animals have emotions towards them the way that people do, which they... A lot of people project a ton right. and people of are, emotions and thoughts onto their pets. Right, and people are just projecting emotions onto these mm-hmm. dolls. I, I would say it's probably... I think it'd be unfair to say any like domestic... Like a cat or a dog would not be the same, but like, yeah, like a snake... Right, like a snake. That's a good example. Mm-hmm. Your snake doesn't give a shit about you. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's right. no snake in the world that gives a shit about its owner. Well, they recognize you by smell, with the tongue. Yeah. So. But but so then they just know that you're like. A they know that you're thing. you. Yeah, yeah. They maybe they just know that you're They're like, like that normal like and not source. threatening. Yeah. You're the thing that puts mice in my cage. Mm-hmm. Um, what about fish? Also, same thing, right? I don't think, I, yeah, I, I don't know if anyone has fish and, like... The fish doesn't care about you. Right. Let's just be honest about that. Here, the thing I respect about the fish owner, unlike the snake owner, mm-hmm. is the fish owner at least understands, essentially, I got myself a moving piece of art in here. Mm-hmm. Yes. I have always wanted to own a snake. They're 100% in on that side of the deal. They, right. <laughs> yeah. They understand that. Right. Right. They're not saying, oh, my God, huh, when I get home, Spot just loves to see me. They're just like, yeah. look at this fucking awesome fish tank. Maybe they it all looks cool. That. I pay like, people to take care of it. Yeah, right, right, right. Except yeah. there are those people that, like, sleep with the snake in their bed. I mean, Luca Brazzi sleeps with mm-hmm. the fishes all the time. Oh, snake people, <laughs> some snake people really like their snakes, yeah. Yeah. I'm picturing more like the exotic pet owner in my yeah, mind for what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's That's like, right. it is where it's, like, set up and it's, like, a centerpiece kind of thing. Right. Yeah. It is weird. Do you think that there's like a genetic, or maybe not genetic, but some sort of like different brain chemistry like between people that like love reptiles and don't? Because like it's a... They're just a different species of people. No, I don't know. <laughs> but it's like an abnormality. But you love reptiles and I love reptiles. Yeah, I think reptiles are like really cool, mm-hmm. but I'm not like... You don't want to own a lizard? I've already owned a lizard and it <laughs> yeah. died, Ariel. It died. I had the same thing. I did a couple it's of hard. They're, they're really hard to take care of because they're not designed to be in the cage. They they're, freeze to yeah. death a lot. That's yeah. what happened to Benji's. Mm-hmm. Yummy. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> kind of like wrapping this up in a second. So one, one last sci-fi thing. What do you guys think about the new Transformers that's coming out? Well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of discord in our house. Yeah, our Is house there? Is okay, house interested. Because I'm, I'm firmly on, I have my opinions about Transformers. Uh-huh. I think I know what they are. Yeah. Um, I'm, I it feels like I'm in the minority They're pretty here. Pacific to my... They're pretty. They're very much like Pacific Rim. Yeah, yeah they're pretty yeah. Pacific to my room, if you know. <laughs> they're uh, Pacific to my room. Uh, um, yes, I think it looks like a hot piece of steaming dog dookie. And Ariel wants to see it. I do want to see it. Here's why. We all know that, that the third Transformers was terrible. I will... The argue. second Transformer is worse, though. I maybe disagree. I think the first and second were watchable movies with Shia LaBeouf in them. But Shia LaBeouf will not be in them. Yes, but Mark Wahlberg is in this one, mm-hmm. and and he read the script and decided to do it. Mm-hmm. And I think and I think Michael Bay probably recognizes that the third one was terrible and the second one was probably not great. And yeah, maybe say, they're like going to do a good job. I'll, I'll make my two points for why I don't think it will be good. Two and a half. Like the fourth Die Hard movie was excellent. It was. I kind of agree with that. Yeah, like yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It was. De- I don't know if it was a full diehard. Anybody movie, really listening to this is like yelling right now. Yeah. Because <laughs> well, everyone hates Transformers. Because everyone hates the fourth diehard too. Oh well, right. No, well, no. it was. It was fun to watch. Yeah. Oh, I like the fourth diehard. Mm-hmm. I'm not looking for like a great movie. I just think it'll be mm-hmm. moderately no, entertaining. No, yeah, just yeah. I, I'm. I'm arguing. Yeah. Benji, I Transformers. Yes. Yeah. Here's the thing. First of all, if I thought this movie was going to be as watchable as Die Hard Four, mm-hmm. I would see it in a fucking heartbeat. I love Die Hard Four. Die Hard Five, by the way. In my top three worst movies I ever made. I've heard that. Yeah, yeah it's really terrible. But that's a, not, that's not sci-fi. It's another story for another podcast. Here are my two arguments against Transformers 4. Mm-hmm. One is Mark Wahlberg signed on before he read the script because he had so much fun working with Michael Bay on Pain and Game, which is Michael Bay's best movie in the past 10 years. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So that takes away that. All right. Well, 
my half point is there's actually a line where he says, yeah, I think we found a transformer. Which is like, you're not supposed to call them transformers in the movie. It's too weird. But they know what they're transformers. They call them zombies in the zombie movie? Yeah, right. It's that. They are called transformers in the movie. Yeah, in, know, the, in the world of transformers, everyone knows and yeah. loves the transformers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know. My third point is back in the day when it was a truck turning into a guy, like the first Transformers movie, which was not great, but I get it. Are you about to be like the grandpa thing in this? Like, back in my day when it was just a truck <laughs> turning a into a bumblebee. <laughs> no, but it, you know they would take these cool robotic like mm-hmm. humanoid shapes. Dinosaurs? I'm, yeah. I am wondering where the dinosaur what comes the from. Fuck is that? I also do. I, I do hate those big action sequences. So I probably will sleep. She's well, in it for, I, the, for the drama between. You're, the you're in it for the, I the sleep, character development. I sleep through every action sequence in every Transformers movie because they're like 45 minutes long. Yeah, they are. I just like fall asleep and then wake up as soon as the characters start talking. See, again. if I could have like edited Shia LaBeouf out of all three of the first movies, that would have been a huge improvement. Just Megan Fox. Like. <laughs> <laughs> she's hot I mean yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. kind of like undeniable yeah. um, I feel like if I watched your two versions of the movies together mm-hmm. I would see nothing because <laughs> yeah and that would be my but the thing is the action sequences are also just god awful yeah, they're, they're, yeah they're, they're terrible really, they're really bad. fucking I agree. atrocious you know what's yeah. weird it's like when you watch there's nothing good about those yeah. movies I, and I probably will see this in the theater I've seen all three of the other ones in the theater see, that's I, kind of also what like I don't think it's going to be good I just hope that I don't walk out of it like I don't know, like, really angry that I spent money on it. If it was terrible and had good action, then I would, like... If it had some good, like... the deal with that. The climax action scenes are terrible, but the pre-climax action scenes are sometimes pretty good. Mm -hmm. That's true. I mean, that's true of a lot of modern-day action movies. Like, I'll watch an action movie and love the first two-thirds of it, and then that last action scene I could just forget. But Mm -hmm. I will say this. I saw Transformers 3 on my birthday, like, a few Mm -hmm. years ago, whenever it came out. That means I've seen Transformers on my birthday and Pacific Rim on my birthday. Two (laughs) terrible birthday movies. Um, You keep just... Really going for the, the, the giant monsters. Yeah, you just keep yeah. going for the giant robots. Yeah. You just really want the giant robot <laughs> to work on your birthday. I know. It will one it's day. It's one day. It so I went into the third one with essentially the mindset you went, that you're going to go into this one, which is mm-hmm. it looks terrible. I'm probably going to see it in theaters anyway. And when I walked out of that one, it broke. I will not see this one in theaters. I, I, yeah. I, that's, I, just, I mean, that's kind of how I feel. Okay. Like I, I, I keep giving it the benefit of the doubt and I keep walking up right. feeling like, Michael Bay just like shoved me. That's how I feel about X Men movies. I, for the record, feel the same way about Transformers and about the third one. I really hated it, right. but I feel like it's a little bit like childbirth. So at this point, I've forgotten <laughs> right. how painful it right. was. Yeah. But all I remember is that you I, have a beautiful child. <laughs> that, mm-hmm. uh, that Transformers are kind of cool. Right. So I'll do mm-hmm. it again. You remember yeah. Optimus Prime, and then you forget like right and Bumblebee. You know, like I forget Bumblebee. Mm-hmm. Guys, at Universal Studios. There is a 3D Transformers ride that is so incredibly fun. We gotta go. Let's do it. It'll be the best. Get that ever. up. I'll go. I'll go okay. to. Uh, we have to. Let's all start seriously. Wait, what would you say? It's Universal Studios. Yeah, it's like eighty bucks to get into the park for the day, but the whole day will be the most fun day of our, of our summer. So let's do this. It's <laughs> it's expensive. So let's like let's all put it away like ten bucks a week for like eight weeks and like say eight weeks and then we'll all go. It'll be super fun. The Mummy ride, also one of the best roller coasters you're going to go on. It sounds pretty good. All right. It sounds pretty good. Beautiful. That's you too, podcast listeners. <laughs> <laughs> you're invited as well. <laughs> what do you think? Should we wrap this up? Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody have any things to plug? These will go online eventually. I and like a website and everything. I'd like to plug science. <laughs> the general concept of science. <laughs> For science. Also maybe Capsella Toys. Capsella Toys, yeah. <laughs> science.com, science.org, science.gov. Mm-hmm. <laughs> NASA, NASA, whatever yes. the Chinese NASA is. Maybe yeah. write write your local representative to fund space exploration. Yeah. <laughs> um, you it. know, maybe <laughs> major in math instead of like liberal arts. Yeah, please bullshit. don't major in liberal arts. Yeah, yeah. Did all did both of you major in liberal? Yeah, you I, were whack. I did not. Yeah. I majored in economics. I gotcha. Yeah, uh, I actually, liberal arts. I I even got a degree from the, the art school, which is not the not liberal arts. Yeah. Liberal arts is that garbage general degree. I don't think. Oh, it was like one of those. It was like one of those make your own degrees or something. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. (sighs) All right. Well. Good podcast, guys. (laughs) Talk to you later. Bye.